That smash single for now country star Dirk Bentley is called What Was I Thinking? That was the lead song off his debut album that went on to be his first number one single. But did you know it was co-written by a Canadian? I'll tell you this, our Lindsay Dunn knew, and she went off in search of these amazing songwriters in Nashville. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy, she has her Happy Friday boots on. Can we see those boots? I these also are got great. them in Nashville. Thought these, it would be appropriate to bring them. These boots were made for walking. Not really, so I'm not <laughs> going to get up. They're made for sitting, and that's why I wore them. Did you like Nashville? I loved it. It was my first time there, and everyone calls it Music City, Music City. I'm like, oh, it can't be that great, but as soon as you get off that airplane and you're in the terminal, they're playing like music. It's everywhere. People are so nice. But the thing that caught me off guard, which I should have known because of the country songs, was all the sequins and sparkles. Yes. It was everywhere. I was underdressed everywhere I went because <laughs> I didn't have a ball gown with glitter. Yeah, it's so good, though. So yeah. how did you track down these songwriters? Because really, you don't really hear about them. You've got to be reading liner notes, which is what you do. Yeah, I admit it. I'm a full-on nerd for music, and I love liner notes, and I love that vinyl is in because now I can actually read them without using a magnifying glass. Sure. But the more artists and country artists and people that I was reading about their songs that I liked, I'd be like, oh, I know this name. It's Derek Rattan, it's Stephen Lee Olson, it's Tebe, and they're all these Canadian artists that are behind these smash hits, like, what was I thinking? Like, that's Derek Rattan right now. He has wrote Blake Shelton, he's like, had the last couple number one hits. They were written by Derek Rattan, and I talked to him about it, and he says, you know, it takes a long journey for them to actually go to number one. Let's take a look. which by, by the time it happens, it seems like it was a miracle. It's, what I always equate it to is it, it's like there's so many, a lock, a combination lock with like a hundred different things that have to line up before that lock opens. Well, that's like getting a song cut. And then to actually have that song be picked as a single is another hundred things that have to line up. And then for that to even be a hit, that's another system of uh, things that all have to line up. So it, it feels like a miracle every time it happens. So true, magic in a bottle. Absolutely, and you know, it's nice to have like a little maple syrup on all of these songs that are going number one, but it's a hard journey to get there. It was 10 years before his first song was recorded by another artist, and he said, you know, the struggles. He would drive a 1987 hatchback from Nashville back to Canada every Christmas, and he would have to hear these questions every time. Mm -hmm. Every Christmas I would drive that car home and I'd, I'd go see my, my grandma Rattan when she was still alive and she would, she would ask me, well, have you sold any songs? You know, and, and I'd say, no, nope, not yet, next Christmas. Well, have you sold any songs? And it was, there was seven years of that before something actually started to click. And, uh, I a lot of hard work and passion. Where can we hear more, Linz? You can watch it tonight on City News. You'll hear from him and some other great Canadian artists. Awesome. Thanks so much. We'll be back with more BT right after that. You